While Halley 6 is being built, much of the science at Halley 5 has been put on hold so that science instruments, masts and buildings can be relocated to the new Halley 6 site. But the Simpson Science Building and Giles and Richard continue to keep the long-term experiments running. Weather observations are made daily and here early in the morning Richard preps a weather balloon transmitter ready to be launched at 8 a.m. The results of the balloon flights are fed to the Met Office to help with modelling global weather patterns and forecasting weather. The Dobson spectrometer is used daily to measure the ozone hole, which was discovered from Halley 25 years ago. The lifetime of Halley studies also continue. Halley 5 site and the new Halley 6 site can be seen on this map. Around this, we can see Ryan Anderson's sites, which monitor the movement of the Brunt ice shelf. They can also help to predict any carving events. Each one is visited in summer to be dug out, maintained, and data downloaded. Today, we are heading to site F0, which lies in the middle of the McDonald ice rumples. This is the only stationary site that Ryan has, as it is in a place where the Brunt ice shelf is grounded on the seabed. We plan to make a walking route in, but because this area is grounded, huge glacier ripples or pressure ridges build up around it and ice passes at 400 metres per year. This makes a very mobile area, not what you want when you're walking over it. Our site lies here and we hope to park the skidoos here. We arrive by link travel on the skidoos. Here you can see the wall of the upturned ice blocks and crevasses on the horizon. We travel light and roped as a three to give us as much safety as possible. We know here that the chances of falling in a crevasse are extremely high. The trick is to find the crevasses before they find you, so you can jump over them. Holes everywhere, but we haven't fallen in yet. Okay. <laughs> Nothing uh, better than the last year of route, I think it's uh, so far, but it makes a heart jump every time a footstep collapses and stuff like that. So. Well, you hear those sounds. But we're nearly there, hopefully. Nearly there. We finally cross the highly mobile and creaking area to easier walking on the smooth stationary centre of the Rumples. And unfortunately, I promised you guys a uh, site that was. Uh, it's going to be easy to, to, to dig out without much snow accumulation and uh, found it was grossly mistaken. This is the most buried of all of our sites. So what I'm standing beside here is the top of the wind generator, which is about two and a half or three meters above the ground. We dig away into the increasingly solid snow as we get deeper. bottom of the three meter hole. So we uh, managed to uh, dig all the way down to the, to the uh, battery boxes and uh, get them out there about 80 kilos each. And uh, yeah, it took us about four hours and uh, we'll just make sure everything's okay and then we'll head back to base. The station is rebuilt and staked out on the surface. We now rope up ready for the journey home. We follow footsteps back, trying to cross the crevasses at 90 degrees. Ryan here is recovering after slipping into a crevasse. Here we can see many crevasses which we have crossed or are nearby. Finally, we can see the easy route out between the huge crevasses and the skidoos in the distance. 